Taking a look back at 2024, the year that was for our skies in Canada, uh, above Canada, I guess I should say, uh, Two big storylines, sort of three main events that we're going to focus on. Uh, yeah. We we have to start with April, That's the right. total solar eclipse that yeah. was seen across much of North America. Scott, you yeah. were in uh, Quebec for uh, this truly astounding event. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, see, I, I was there in Tennessee in 2017 for that uh, eclipse, uh, right in the path of totality, uh, which was an amazing thing for someone I ever seen. But this one just blew that away i mean uh it was cloudy through niagara and the gta which was where our initial ideas were to go but well, going to southern quebec where there's a nice high pressure ridge over the whole area perfectly clear pristine skies uh gave us an amazing view of this eclipse so um we were right in the path of totality we were amongst the longest of the totality mm -hmm. uh areas for for canada for that matter uh, the only place that would have been longer would be Niagara region. And um, just seeing the progression of, of things leading up to the eclipse, uh, where like you don't really notice anything's going on. You have to put on your eclipse glasses yeah. to be able to see what's happening. Sky doesn't look any different yeah. at all until like maybe 90, 95% of the, of the moon is covering, uh, the, the sun is covered up by the moon. And only then do you really begin to notice the, change the tint of the sky yeah. changes and the street lights come on even though it's still light out mm -hmm. still light enough that the street lights should be off the light the lights suddenly start coming on because yeah. they're reacting to the fact that there's so little sunlight actually reaching us and then to go into like you get the bailey's beads where the the moon is like 99.99 percent of the covering up the sun and then totality where you can take the glasses off and look up and see the solar corona mm -hmm. surrounding, which was a, a incredibly bright. Yeah. Uh, even compared to 2017, because the sun is so much more active now. You can see little red and white prominences poking out from the side of the moon for these 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 immense coronal uh, loops that are that are stretching away from the sun, and um, just the awe in everybody watching. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was such an, an incredible, incredible event. Yeah, I was able to experience totality in my backyard in Hamilton. Yeah, and the notice I noticed the drop in temperature yep. was it was just such a cool experience that I'll, I'll remember forever. Yep. The other storyline that we want to uh, talk about uh, is just how active the Northern Lights were this year. Yeah, the Aurora, exactly. A couple of big events in yep. May and in October as we approach Solar Maximum. Yeah. That's really that's right. sort of been the storyline uh, uh, that that we've been following. Yeah, I mean. It, it, we've we've seen a few big events even from even from 2023 but this year it's been yeah uh may 10th to 11th uh, even one in early august as well yes. and then again in, in in october uh 10th and 11th uh coincidentally but yeah this is going to keep do we're going to keep seeing these but yeah these bright bright uh occurrences of the of this of the auroras as the the sun is blasting out these these immense uh coronal mass ejections mm -hmm. of of matter as the as the sun becomes more active we're now in solar maximum so okay. uh this will continue and we'll see more of them but yeah the just the brightness of the auroras how far south they yes. extended um sort of unprecedented for the past i mean the may event was the strongest solar storm in 20 years so going way back to uh halloween of uh, 2003 so immensely powerful storm uh this will probably be studied for years to come produced auroras that's extended way down into the United States. It's very pretty out here. 